This is Coach Lee with my expatcoach.com, and today I'm going to talk to you about what your ex is thinking during no contact and your ex's mind during no contact. Take a second and click the subscribe button below so that you can be notified when I have more content that's helpful to your situation, and that includes attraction and relationships. So one of the most common questions that I receive is, what is going on in the mind of my ex while I'm in no contact? Are they thinking about me? Are they moving on without me? Are they sad? Are they feeling like they are relieved? And so I answer that a lot and it's very helpful for you to know because you're probably gonna be analyzing it anyway. I might as well give you some direction so that you can know what really is likely going on in the mind of your ex. So the first thing, after they've broken up with you, they feel relief. And I know that's difficult to hear, but they do. And part of it is because they have been preparing for the breakup longer than you. For you, it was most likely a blind side. You had no idea it was coming. For them, they most likely had started thinking about it, at least in small part, several weeks ago, maybe even several months ago. And so for them, it's something that's gradually been building. They have gradually been accepting it, learning to live with the idea that they would be breaking up with you and that you two would be breaking up. And they are now feeling relieved because they've been able to do it and they've gotten past that bump. It was difficult because they didn't want to hurt you and they probably still liked a lot of the relationship, but for whatever reason, and I go into that in other videos and at myexpatcoach.com, but for whatever reason, your ex decided that they did not see a future with you. And usually that's because attraction has fallen. As a matter of fact, almost always it is due to attraction falling and those things that were not quite as important to them before, like long distance or annoying behavior or family issues or weird circumstances or even some physical things that just didn't quite matter before, now matter all of a sudden more so. And so they have been preparing to break up with you and they finally do it. And so in some ways, they're patting themselves on the back. They are relieved that they have gotten it over with. And so at this point, it's easier for them to try to move forward than to move backwards because they feel like they've gotten the breakup over with. And so this is the worst time that you could try to talk them into getting back together with you or beg or plead or stay in contact because your ex feels like if they were to move back into this relationship, it would be moving backwards. That's what they feel at the moment because they've been working towards this mentally, emotionally for a time now. And so they have gotten over the hump and they don't want to go backwards. They're celebrating in some ways and it's not a celebration like a party, but they are glad they've gotten this difficult task over with that they did not want to do. And so they're relieved. So that's where you two are at extreme different points. They are relieved, you are crushed. And I know that that sucks. There's just no other way to say it. It sucks times 10. It sucks times a million. And for them, though it wasn't pleasant, it probably hurt and they are hurting, but they are also relieved. And so, the first little bit after the breakup is easiest for your ex. It's more difficult for you, but the tables slowly start to turn in most cases. And again, I just want to add in most cases, this is not math. I like math and I try to use as much math as possible, but it's not an exact science. Your ex is a human being. Your ex is complex. There are many things that influence this. So I'm not guaranteeing anything. And I don't think that you should be looking at this as a definite black and white type of thing. There's not really a way to know what will absolutely happen. And so it's best for you to be working on yourself and no contact is best for you because it helps you to move forward with or without your ex. Now they are relieved because they have gotten this difficult task over with. It takes a little bit of time because at the moment, not only are they relieved, but they also experience none of the loss because they feel that since they were the one who
who broke up with you that if they wanted you back, they could get you back just like that. They could just make a call, they could just shoot a text over, and you take them back because they're the ones who broke up with you. That's the position of power. You were in the position of weakness. You were the one who was not quite the prize, and now they are the untouchable prize that you are clamoring for. And so I want to take a second and give you a little something to think about. Yes, you do love this person and care about this person, but also what you're going through at the moment is in many ways influenced by the sense of loss. You had this person and now you don't. They slipped through your fingers. You've lost them. They have rejected you. So you feel that some of your value is even connected to, to them and to if they want to get back together with you or not, if they want you or not. And so some of what you're feeling, some of this pain, it's not all just wanting them back. A lot of it is the injury of the situation and that you have been devalued. That's what it feels like. You have not been devalued to the people who truly care about you, your family, your friends. You were created as a human being with value. You matter. You can get through this. Keep that in mind. Now your ex knows that they can get you back. In an instant, they could text you and you two could get back together. So your ex is not truly experiencing the breakup because you are experiencing the opposite. For you, you feel that you can't get your ex back just like that. You can't make a text or a call and get them back. You may try it, but it fails and it actually just digs the hole deeper. And so your ex is not yet experiencing the loss. The fastest way to make your ex feel the loss is to leave them alone because that's when they can see that you are strong. You could move on. You're not contacting them and they begin to see a point where they will lose you, where you could not be gotten back with just a simple request. And so that's very important. So that leads us into the next stage that your ex will go through after the relief and feeling that they could just take back the decision if they really wanted to, which actually puts no pressure on them at all. The next stage, however, if you go into no contact, is that your ex will begin to be curious. And as you've heard me say in many of my videos, curiosity is a precursor to attraction. So that's a big thing. You are doing nothing and yet becoming more attractive to your ex. So your ex is curious. What are you doing? Why are you not reaching out? Because they really thought that you would chase them. They thought this was not the last time they'd hear from you, that you would be calling and wanting to get back together and pleading and crying. They thought you'd chase them. And it's a little bit of an ego shot to them. And so they're curious, what's going on? Why is he not chasing me? Why is she not chasing me? And they wonder what you're doing, who you're doing it with, why you're not chasing. Maybe you're stronger than they thought. And this is extremely key because this can turn the tables a little bit because you thought they were unobtainable. You had them, they slipped through your fingers, you've lost them. You've lost what you had, which is the worst feeling a human being can feel. Someone you love dies, you had them, you lost them. Having something and losing it is far worse than not having something that you never had. For example, I've always had a crush on Jennifer Aniston. She thought Brad Pitt was better. Go figure. I've never had Jennifer Aniston. We've never been a couple. We've never dated. So I've never lost her. I've never had her. So while I can have a crush on Jennifer Aniston since I was a teenager and watched Friends, I don't experience the loss because I've never had her. And it's much easier. I can joke about it. But if she and I had been dating and I had her and then lost her, that's when true pain, emotionally speaking, happens because I had something that I lost because you have to have it in order to lose it. So that's why it's so difficult. So now that your ex is wondering why you're not chasing them, they entertain the idea. Their mind actually circles and orbits the idea that they've lost you. And again, this is assuming you are doing no contact. If you are, then this is likely, very likely what they're going through. And this is a pivotal moment because your ex needs to go through this phase in order to start 
being afraid, in order to start being concerned, to beyond being curious, to now your ex is worried that they have blown it with you. Talk about a table turn because you were living in the reality that you had blown it with them, that maybe you could never get them back, that this was over and you experienced the loss. And now they are in that stage where they fear that they have lost you, that they had you. And not only did they lose you, but it was by their own decision, which can lead to little subcategories inside of this stage that they're in to where they feel like they have made a big mistake, that they have blown it with you, that they gave something away that was so valuable to them. And again, this is assuming you are not contacting them because that's the only way they can experience the loss. That's the only way they can miss you and notice that you're not there is if you're not there. And so they are wondering if they've lost you. And the next stage of course is they fear. And this is where oftentimes they will reach out because they want that feeling back that they could just and get you back, that they could just send a simple text, that they could just make a phone call and you would just stand up at attention and say, here I am, I'm back with you. They want that back because what that does is they don't feel any concern that they've made a mistake. They don't even have to worry about it because if they did, no problem, snap their fingers and you're back. There's no consequences. So we have to get them out of that stage. You want them to be out of that stage so that they feel the pressure to contact you. And again, they can't feel that pressure if you're there, if you keep texting, if you keep calling, if you show up, if they know 24 hours a day that you want them back. And there's no doubt about that. There's nothing to fear. There's no concern. There's nothing to worry about. You're right there. And if they do decide they made a mistake, no problem. And so they're free to just go date whoever they want, do whatever they want, and you'll be right there, backup plan. You don't want to be the backup plan because they will never choose the backup plan because they see it as a backup plan. Nobody wants the backup plan. You want the starter. You want what you think is best. You want what you think is most exciting, what is meant for you. You don't want the backup plan. That's why you should refuse to be the backup plan and back out. Did you see what I did there? So the key here is that you're in no contact so that they can feel the concern that they've lost you. And that is often when they will contact you. They'll reach out with something casual, like just wanted to see how you're doing. And they're just testing the water. They're hoping to get some sort of message from you that says, I'm still right here. I'll take you back any second. And you shouldn't do that. Of course, you should be casual. Tell them you're having a great week. That way they continue to stay in that stage where they wonder if they've blown it with you. And that's how they can feel the same loss that you felt when they broke up with you. And things that magnify this is they go to their phone when it vibrates. They're used to it being you and now it's not. And so every time it vibrates, it's a reminder. It's setting up disappointment that it's not you. Even if they're not at that moment missing you and wanting you back just because you're not chasing and just because they expected you to and their expectations were not met, it does create some disappointment. And so you're setting them up to be disappointed that you're not contacting them. And it can be a fun little game in some ways because I don't like to call it a game. I think it's a mature response, but it depends on how you look at it. And some people call it a game. I don't care what you call it. If you want your ex back, you want your ex back. It doesn't matter how. So that's what's going on in the mind of your ex when you're in no contact. And that's what's so important about all of this. We want to turn the tables to where they feel the loss. They have the fear, all those things that you might be feeling now or that you felt recently when they broke up with you, the tables can turn. If you go into no contact, you can schedule a coaching call with me at my So just go to my You can schedule a coaching call with me, or you can find out more information on my new course, the emergency breakup kit, which is like getting multiple hours of coaching with me, but for a less price. And I have released that last week and I'm excited about that. So if you're watching this video, you can go to my and you can get the breakup course, which is very helpful. If you're going through a breakup, if you want to schedule a coaching call with me, you can do that there as well. Please click the subscribe button below. If this video has been helpful to you, 
That will let you be notified when I have more content that's helpful to your situation on building attraction, on relationships, or on getting your ex back. And if you like this video, please click the like button. This has been Lee with my expatcoach.com. Thank you for watching.